You are in a position where you can win the point. Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are highlighting the 14 biggest technical forehand volley mistakes. And we're going to start right now. Vamos. Around 60% of the people has not subscribed. If you like and subscribe, it means a lot. Muchísimas gracias. Mistake number one, having a very low preparation. This is the most common mistake. Everybody waiting for the ball here, because this feels very comfortable. This is easy. This is something that you can do for 10 hours in a row. But if the ball is coming from here, you will play the ball up and you will not play a good volley. So so I highly, highly recommend to be here and never there. Mistake number two, having no neutral preparation. So having the folly too much here or there. The no neutral preparation. So if you're preparing like this, which I see a lot, you have a problem when the ball is here. If you're preparing with the back end, you have a problem when the ball is there. So when you're pe 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 preparing neutral or slightly to the back end, because you can solve more body shots. If your opponent is playing fast, a little bit to the back end. So a little bit like this. If your opponent is playing slow, be there that you can hit them like a hammer. Mistake number three, hitting the bottom of the ball. Then the ball goes up, is not so amazing. You have to hit the top of the ball. This has to do with the first mistake, and uh, the second mistake, uh, but it also has something to do with the footwork and that you step in. So what I would highly recommend, the most important thing, why you are at the net, is to play the ball down. So even though you are playing your volleys like this, if you can play this ball to the fence, you still have an amazing volley. So always, always, hit the top of the ball. Mistake number four, no rotation. So a lot of players when they're at the net, they are at the net here, which is a good neutral position. But the moment you see that you're getting a forehand folly, you should rotate your body. Because if you're playing like this or like this, if you open, you will play your forehand folly up. If you are here too much, you might do that. It will be okay if you play to the fence, like we explained, but if you play deep in the corner or to the center, the ball will come up a lot. So what I would highly recommend is even though somebody plays fast, you can always be here. So if they play fast, you can block, but you have a lot of control because the racket can go forwards. And what uh, would be even better is to step into the ball with the rotation. So you rotate, you hit, and you keep the shoulders like this. You would never go there because you will go up and you want to play from high to low, but that will come into another tip. 
mistake number five, having no close to continental grip. The continental grip is the easiest to play with from the back, uh, from the net position, because you don't have any time to change grip. If you play in a continental grip, you can play your backhand volley and your forehand volley from the same grip. If I am at the net and the player is at the back there, I don't have any time to switch grip. So what I would highly recommend is to always be continental. Um, but if you don't have like super ambition or you don't want to be the best paddle player in the world, you don't have to play in the continental grip. Because if you feel like it's very difficult to change, I rather let you play a little bit in the forehand grip. You might have a problem with the back end there. Um, so that's still okay. So I would highly recommend to be close to the continental grip. So close to the pink mouse on the top, like I have here. So if I go slightly here or slightly there, it does not really matter that much. But remember, you have not so much time when you're at the net. So you rather think of, okay, what can I do to increase um, my, or what can I do to have more time? And that's something that you can do. It's like if I have to go to work at seven, I can prepare my breakfast in the evening so I can wake up later. This is the same at the net. If I already do my grip, if I already have my preparation high, I already made my breakfast in the evening, so I have better volleys, or you can sleep later. Something that everybody wants. Mistake number six, not using the non-dominant hand. It has something to do with the timing. So if I am here, it's a very big, large area where the ball is going to be. If I have my left hand here, I can use my left hand to know and to calculate where the ball is going to be. Because I can use my left hand as a reference. And if I use my left hand, to there, you can see that I'm rotating my body. So it helps a lot with the rotation of your body and it helps you keeping the folly short, which we come to in a second. Mistake number seven, a big backswing. If somebody has the left hand here, this will happen. If somebody has the left hand here, this is more likely to happen. So using that non-dominant hand keeps you uh, making your swing shorter. What you can also do is put the rope around your left wrist and train it like this, so you have a short backswing, because this will be really, really weird. So um, do the left rope around your left, the left rope, <laughs> the rope around your left wrist, and then folly. The left rope, remember guys, super important, left rope. Mistake number eight, having too open or too closed folly preparation. So the preparation, what I would highly recommend is to come a little bit like this. So what I would usually say with the forehand folly is that the top of the racket is facing the fence behind you. 
If you have it too much like this, you will play too much slice or you use your wrist too much to, to have it like this. this. You don't want that. If it's too closed like this, uh, the ball will come up a lot. So, and it's more likely to be better if you rotate because if you're here, you're more likely to do that. If you are um, rotating out, it's also more likely that your racket stance is too open. So what I would recommend if you are pre uh, pre preparing, difficult word, to have it like this and then end there or end there, but to follow through, uh, which we also come to in a second. But this is perfect. You can play slice and deep. It's also important to know the direction where you are playing to. So if I play deep, if I'm playing on the right and I'm playing a forehand deep into the corner, I would have it a little bit more open. If I want to play a forehand volley to the fence, I would have it a little bit more straight. So uh, this is all kind of variable. Mistake number nine, not stepping into the volley. Oh, well done. And this is the mistake that everybody makes, not stepping into the volley. So if somebody plays fast, you cannot step into the volley. You should not step into the volley because it's too difficult. But the moment when I am in a good position when I'm volleying and I step and hit at the same time, like you should, it feels like the ball just goes over the net and it also helps you to follow through a little bit more. It also helps you with your head balance and uh, the balance in general of the forehand volley. And it just feels like the, you don't have to put any effort into the ball. If you're standing, uh, especially with slow shots, and you're not stepping into the volley, you're using your arm too much. You have a, such a big swing. So um, the other mistake was the big back swing. This is something people do that are not stepping into the volley. So if you step into the volley, uh, it feels like your backswing is way, way shorter. If you're standing here or you step in and then swing, it does not work. It has to happen at the same time or later. But if you're already there, it is always a big swing. And then you don't need a big swing because you want to keep the volley speed medium, not high and sometimes low. So it is better to use less muscles. And so if you're, what I would say a lot now in my lessons is to solve the balls with your feet and not with your hand. So you don't want to do that. You want to step to the ball because then you can still have a good arm. Yeah, if that makes any sense. Mistake number 10, making a ball underneath the ball. So mistake number 10 is making the ball. And the ball, like this, it will be perfect for your breakfast to put cereal in, but that's it. If you folly like this, high, low, high, if you end higher than you begun, you will decrease the speed of the ball and your volley will never shoot through. The ball will have slice, but the ball is not accelerating after the bounce, which is very easy to defend. I like it a lot of people play the ball volley. Don't do that. So what I would recommend is to prepare high and to end with your preparation lower than the net. This is something that was not allowed in 
tennis, if I did that, I would send home that you end lower than the net, but prepare higher than the ball. So if the ball is here, if the, the ball is my fist, I prepare higher than the ball, I go down and I end lower than the net, always. If for some reason the ball is very slow and low over the net and my contact point is lower than the net, I still want to avoid the scoop volley because this is what you were thinking of, I know. So if the contact point is lower than the net, it's still this. Because the moment when you want to play the low ball, the low volley deep, that's the moment where you do this and then they can take over the net with the volley lob or with the, uh, yeah, with the volley lob especially, or they can attack you. So if the ball is low, still go from high to low. And the trick is to play that ball short. You don't need to make them use the glass always. It is more like, how can I keep the ball as low as possible? And sometimes that means it's playing the ball short or playing a drop shot. Mistake number 11, hitting the ball from underneath the net height. So this is something, has something to do with stepping into the volley. This has something to do with the correct position. Uh, this is not super technical, but it happens a lot. And it has something to do with the fact that you are lazy. You choose lazy footwork. You don't want to be lazy. Because if you are lazy, you're going to make mistakes at the net. And that's the part where you don't want to make any mistakes because you are in the position where you can win the point. So you have to keep moving. So one of the biggest mistakes is that people are not moving all the time. You need to move when you don't have the ball. If my partner gets 25 balls in a row, it does not mean that I grab a chair and I sit and wait until somebody is nice enough to play the ball to me. I still keep moving. Always, because you never know when they play to you. If you're at the net, if you're at the back, you always need to keep moving. So when two cars are at the traffic lights and this car is stopped and this car is still driving to the traffic lights and it is green, this car will be faster. You don't want to be the car that is waiting for the traffic light. You always want to keep moving. And hitting the ball higher than the net, you are in charge of the rally. If you are hitting the ball lower than the net, they are in charge of the rally, and you want to be in charge. Vamos. Mistake number 12, no follow through. What I would recommend is to have a very short backswing. So my racket, I can still see my racket. There is not a point, only when the ball is super low and I'm gonna kill the ball, that I cannot see my racket when I'm there. So what is very important is that you can always see your racket. From there, if you have a short backswing, you can follow through. If you have a big backswing and you also follow through, you're going to play way too fast, you're going to make too much mistakes. So the big backswing is the, mo the biggest reason why people stop. If you stop, you're going to hurt your arm, your shoulders, and this is why people get injured. What I would also recommend is to have it short, to rotate, and then make it long. If you're not rotating, uh, you also don't have a follow through. You're going also to hurt your arm. So this is why people get injured. I, maybe I'm gonna do a bonus tip in the end of the video. Mistake number 13, making big steps. Big steps make big swings. Small steps make small swings. And I especially talk about the preparation. So what, what I would highly recommend is to make small steps so you can adjust better and you have a better contact point. 
And what I see a lot, if people are at the net and the ball is coming, that's not the correct one. What I would highly recommend, and this is a bonus tip that I'm thinking of now, if I want to go to the ball over there, I should go diagonal. So I go like this. I never step in there, I step in there. Then I have way more balls and I have to move less. And that will help you to make small steps as well. Mistake number 14, head is not with the ball. Uh, the head balance, the head not with the ball. What I see a lot is that people tend to folly here and then the head is there, but the racket is there. It immediately feels like I don't have any control on what is going to happen. So keep your head with the ball because then you have the correct balance and it also helps you to shorten your backswing. It also helps you to rotate. It basically helps you to do everything from the list up here. So maybe this is one of the most important things in every single shot in paddle. It also helps, bonus, another bonus tip, is to look at the contact point. A lot of coaches say, look to the ball. But if I am volleying and I hit the ball and I look there, look, this is hurting your neck. If you, if you hurt your neck, you know where this is about. But this is no balance. This is balance. Look how Roger Federer plays tennis. When he hits the ball, he's there, he looks at the ball, and then he looks there. Then you have way more head balance. Another bonus tip, which is super important, is I was thinking of with the follow through. A lot of people, they hit the ball very far in front of them. You cannot follow through when you hit the ball very far in front of you. So it would be better to hit the ball late or later uh, next to you, because from here, I can carry the ball more forwards. I have more slice, more control, more precision. So sometimes it is better to be a little bit later. You don't want to hit the ball behind you. I see that a lot of times as well. Mostly has something to do with your big backswing that you should not have uh, because you make big steps and the other mistakes of the list. But keep it small, keep it next to you and then follow through. And you will have amazing follies in a few weeks. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Hasta luego. Ciao. Adios. Please let us know what mistake you make the most. Comment below.